Augmented reality mobile gaming looks to be the next big thing. Sometimes, like here in Angry Birds AR, it already works pretty well. Yes! And later, I'll get into developers taking it even further. But is AR mobile gaming really cutting edge or just another gimmick? Our topic on Shift today. Don't want to spend a fortune on a virtual reality headset? No problem. All you need for augmented reality is a recent smartphone and a sense of adventure. AR, or augmented reality, is when the real environment is enhanced through computer-generated objects. According to the US game developer Niantic, that's the team behind Pokemon Go, AR is about to explode. Niantic just released Wizards Unite, which they say uses state-of-the-art AR tech. The media hype has been huge, and no wonder. Their target group is all the Harry Potter fans around the world. And the trailer looks fit for Hollywood. The game developers have promised players that they will feel like wizards immersed in the Harry Potter world. Persona! The aim of the game is to find lost magical objects called foundables. Like in other GPS-based location-enabled games, a map tells players where the foundables are and points out magical spots. Wizards Unite is not for couch potatoes. Expect to walk between 2 and 10 kilometers to get a hold of important port keys. Once players reach a magical spot, their phone camera takes in the real-life environment and adds the AR object. It's next-generation um, AR with a full 360-degree view of these incredible characters and creatures and artifacts from the Harry Potter universe. Um, so it's definitely kind of the most advanced AR experience um, to date. The 360-degree view didn't really work when I tried it out. But it's not that important for Wizards Unite anyway. In theory, I could even turn off the AR mode, which would be good for my phone battery, because AR eats up a lot of power. To be honest, I'd rather stay with the original, Pokemon Go. The setup is pretty much the same. You have to walk and swipe. Pokemon Go is still a huge deal and generates over a million euros per day. The makers of Wizards Unite are hoping that their new baby will be just as successful. But the bar is very high. Publishers of Wizards Unite Niantic released Pokemon Go in 2016. The game was a global hit. The app has been downloaded over 800 million times and has earned Niantic over 2 billion euros. And even three years after its release, Pokemon Go continues to be high up in the charts. Jurassic World Alive has a similar setup. Switching on the AR mode lets dinosaurs appear in a player's environment. This app is also a huge success. It was downloaded over 500,000 times in May 2019. Game design professor Thomas Bremer says we're still in the early stages of AR games and that developers are using smartphone tech and famous characters from popular culture to reach as many new potential gamers as possible. Pokemon or this Harry Potter game are basically multimedia collector card games. The collector card model is very old and works well, and it's now being expanded to include things from real life. Good old collector cards. But augmented reality offers completely new possibilities to this old concept. Almost all newer smartphones are equipped for AR, and there's no need for an extra headset. Developers hope to reach a lot more people this way. And tech giants Google and Apple are working around the clock to develop even better software. But how does augmented reality work on a smartphone? Cameras, sensors and GPS tracking units. These elements make smartphones ideal for playing location-based games. The camera takes in an environment which is then analysed and processed by an app. Newer smartphones also have special infrared cameras called depth sensors. They measure the world, basically. And thanks to these measurements, a phone can locate exactly where it is in a real-life environment. So I can move forward or backward, or I can turn around. 
The size of the space is irrelevant. It can be the whole world, like with Ingress, one of the first AR games to use GPS tracking. It incorporates landmarks from the real world to create a virtual game world. Or the space can be restricted to a book. Like this award-winning adventure game Erna's Unheil or Erna's Curse. Here, a familiar medium becomes interactive. The camera recognises the pages and allows the reader to decide how the story should continue using expanded reality. It becomes an adventure game. Depending on what decision the app user makes, he or she is forwarded to other pages of the book and experiences the story in a new way. Smartphone tech is constantly being developed, and this also makes such sophisticated game-related ideas possible. Take Angry Birds, for example. The game first came on the scene 10 years ago, but now there's an augmented reality version, which adds a whole new level to the gaming principle. For example, I now have to place the level I want to play in my environment, and can then move around it and choose the perfect spot to launch my attack. Bam! Bullseye! Microsoft is taking it a step further. They bought Minecraft, the world's most successful computer game, in September 2014, for over 2 billion euros. The AR mobile version of the game is coming soon, and it looks seriously cool. You can only play Minecraft Earth if you switch on the AR function. Then you need to find a free surface to start building your architectural masterpiece. This is your virtual base plate, because GPS technology is not yet quite sophisticated enough to help design buildings to the exact millimetre, Microsoft has combined different technologies. One of them is tracking, which can help locate free surfaces. With the latest AR functions, a smartphone's camera can identify feature points. The AR game, in this case the machines, can even spill over to beyond the tables, so to speak. For Minecraft Earth, tracking combines with mapping so that single objects can be identified. The system can recognise a table and mark anchor points. Then a complex 3D point cloud is created and uploaded to an open source cloud system. The app uses the information to find its way in the real world and all gamers are able to see the AR objects in the same spot. Gamers can work together to create architectural masterpieces. But at the same time, they're also indirectly working for Microsoft, for free. It's no secret that Microsoft, Google and Co. collect as much location data as they can through my phone, so long as I don't opt out. The data collected from Minecraft Earth is going straight into Microsoft's cloud system and is helping create a super precise 3D model of the Earth. This troubles privacy advocates. Now, Microsoft insists that no photos of the gaming environment will end up online, only low-resolution point clouds. But what about if I play Minecraft at home? Will my apartment then be scanned and uploaded as a point cloud? What's clear is that in AR, companies earn money from personal data as well. But that's not their only source of revenue. Companies that make free-to-play games such as My Tamagotchi Forever earn plenty of money from in-app purchases. In 2017, worldwide in-app purchase revenues reached an incredible 33 billion euros. Players don't have to buy anything, but then they will have to be more patient. There's a system of time mechanisms. If I don't want to wait to carry on playing, then I have to buy gold or diamonds, etc., so that I can start playing again faster. And, of course, there is advertising. The new augmented reality Google Map not only helps users find their way, but also makes shopping suggestions. This is how Berlin's Adelon Hotel appears in Wizards Unite. The placement is a little less in your face. You can sell a location, so to speak. A company will say, if you give us money, we'll put something great in front of your business, so that many users will go there and are more likely to stop by. It's a classic advertising trick, which doesn't seem like advertising. One thing I'm especially excited about are multiplayer AR games. But the necessary tech isn't quite there yet. 
The problem usually is lacking bandwidth rate. Because there can't be any lag between different devices players are using. Otherwise, my opponent won't know that I just got him. This works better in ultra-fast 5G networks. But this new mobile network standard is not yet widespread. Hopefully, we won't have to wait too long for 5G. And in the meantime, AI is steadily improving. For instance, when it comes to tracking and locating position and pose, or orientation. It used to be that AR always had to have a kind of marker. The second generation, like Pokemon for example, recognized the ground and could say, I'll position something there. But this new generation can recognize three-dimensional objects and move around or enhance them. A Berlin-based college has developed an app that places objects in their original context. In this case, an excavation site in Aleppo, Syria. Users can move around in the space and observe the objects, bringing the historical site alive. Mobile augmented reality is really exciting. And better cameras are making it possible. Manufacturers are investing into depth sensors more and more. These sensors can recognize distance, which in turn allows augmented reality apps to locate their position and pose in a given space. Smartphones have inadvertently become the dream devices of AR creators. Because users don't need to buy any additional equipment to immerse themselves in augmented reality. And of course, the more people check out AR games, the more valuable data developers have access to. So it's no wonder that game developers are latching onto already popular characters of pop culture, such as Harry Potter. Which brings us back where we started. What do you think about augmented reality? Which games do you like in particular? Let us know on YouTube, Facebook or on DW.com. All the best for now, till next time.